Hey guys, it's Harley Wood. As you can see, I'm back out in the woods. Um, for those of you who saw my winter overnighter where I tested my get home bag, this is going to be the summer version of that. If you didn't see the winter version, I'll post a link down below. Uh, I learned quite a bit in that and um, it caused me to readjust my bag quite a bit, add a few things, take away a few things, and I've even since changed the bag since then. Um, I'm now running the Maxpedition Zafar. In the previous video I had the Falcon 2. And um, so I'm gonna put this one to the test now. It's summer, it is uh, almost the end of May, and it's 90 degrees out here today. It's very hot. Um, this is our hunting property, as you can see right here in the picture. There is a deer stand back there. Um, this is this is the side of the, the property where one of my buddies hunts, but um, I'm gonna go back here, find some place to put up the hammock, and get tent, uh, get camp set up. Uh, I do have my AR with me. I'm gonna take that, try to get some something for dinner. Uh, I might even try to do a little coyote hunting tonight. I, I brought a, uh, a coyote call with me. Let's see, what else? I think that's about it. Um, yeah, here we go again, and it's hot. Got the varmint tips. See if we can't bust a coyote or two with those. Ready to go. It is hot as shit out here. Um, but this is how you learn, right? So right now I'm looking for a couple things. Water, um, and I do know that there's a big ditch up ahead here that should have water in it even this time of year. And I'm also looking for a good place to put my hammock. Um, I'm on a road, it's a logging road, and uh, there's actually tractor signs still through here, so it probably hasn't been too long since they came through. And uh, might find some trees right around this corner here that I can string the hammock up in. Let's go take a look. All right guys, I think I found the spot where I'm gonna stay for tonight. Um, I'm gonna string up my hammock between this tree that one over there. Uh, clear a little bit of this brush out. Nothing too major. It's mostly just this kind of ivy crap that's all over the ground. And uh, it is really hot. I gotta go find some water. I do have a canteen. I have 24 ounces of water. But after, by the time I get this uh, hammock put up and the rain fly, I'm probably gonna drink all that and have to go find some more. And I'm sweating everywhere. So uh, let me get this hammock put up. All right, in case you didn't see my video on uh, probably one of the best ways to hang a hammock, I'll show it to you here. I'll also post a link to that video below. So I'm using these rappel rings. Uh, you can buy these at any uh, outdoor sporting goods store and a carabiner. So I just took the strap, put the carabiner through it, and then in order to hook this, the line through it, you go through both of the rings, pull some slack, split the rings, come back through the backside the same way you did, but only through one of them. And so it makes kind of this shape like that. Let's show it to you again here. You see it went through once, come back, and just take it through one of them a single time. You can pull all that slack this way, but if you try to pull back the other way, it cinches up. Yeah. 
All right, guys, the hammock is up. Uh, while I was working, I found a tick crawling on me. So, oops, I do have bug repellent in my go bag. Went ahead and sprayed around the bottom of my shoes and uh, my arms that are exposed. So it's a good thing that I had that priceless. And uh, with all the bugs that are flying around and as warm as it is, I have a feeling I'm really gonna appreciate this tonight. Now, it, it does have a bug net on it, so I don't think anything's gonna mess with me there, but um, you know, until I get zipped up for the night, yeah, I could see it being kind of a pain in the ass. So get some of that. Here's one of those bastards right there. Spotted tick. He's got a spot right on his back. It's good Lyme disease right there. I'm gonna have to be careful. All right. So I'm not gonna show you the part where I didn't have the rappel rings hooked up right and I fell on my ass. Um, it is hooked up right now. And hopefully this will be a very comfortable night. I am not going to plan to have a fire. I might regret that. It's, uh, it's only going to be 65 degrees tonight, so I don't think I'm going to be too cold. Um, like I said though, this is a logging road and there is deadfall everywhere. So even in the middle of the night if I have to clear a bunch of this pine straw out of the way and, and get a little fire going here, it's not a big deal. Um, the ticks are everywhere. I kind of forgot about that part of year down here. So I've already picked three off of me. And might have to have the wife pick a few off when I get home. Lucky her. So it's much too hot to be out doing much work right now. I think I'm going to lay low. It's about 3 o'clock in the afternoon, maybe closer to 4. Um, give it a few hours till the trees drop down, or excuse me, the sun drops behind those trees back there. And um, temperature will go down a good 5 or 10 degrees. And then we'll go out and try to hunt some coyotes. Um, yeah, let's take a nap. All right, guys, it's about two hours after the last video, or the last segment, and um, didn't really get a nap much, but I laid here, let some of the heat dissipate. It's probably four or five degrees cooler now. It's still probably 80, 82, somewhere around there. But the sun's going down, so I'm gonna grab the AR, um, grab the coyote call, and head back up to the road. And I know they like to travel those roads at dusk. So I'm gonna see if I can't call a couple in and start getting rid of some of that uh, coyote problem we have down here. And if I get a squirrel or something uh, to eat, even better. All right, let's go. All right, guys, I have walked about a quarter of a mile and I've come to what, like the forward edge forward edge of our property. Um, it's these power lines. I don't know if you can see them down there and all the way up here. So I have a box stand actually right up on top of that hill and um, that may be where I try to call in some coyotes. I do have a chair still in there from last season so I'll be able to sit in there. Um, I do know though there's a little creek bed right here in the bottom of this ditch. So I brought my canteen with me and I brought my life straw. And I'm very thirsty. So I think I may fill it up as many times and drink it as many times as I can stand to do. And then go back up to that box stand and try to call in some coyotes. All right, let's get some water. It's moving a little bit, but nothing I'd want to drink unfiltered. Um, 
there's also deer sign all through here, all the way back up the hill. So who knows? There's probably piss in here and there, I see bugs flying all over the top of the water. So I'll fill it up, but I'm gonna drink from the life straw. Well, I won't bore you with me drinking all this water, but I'm probably going to drink down two of these things, maybe three, and then I'll head back up the hill and we'll get in that box stand, try to call in a coyote. Let me fill up though first. So I'm about halfway up to the, the shooting house. I don't know if you can see it. It's up there on top of the hill, but I wanted to stop because I actually found something I didn't know was here before. It's a mineral lick for these deer. And if you look, there's deer sign all through there. They're coming all through here. It's so overgrown in here though. I don't know if I, I mean, I guess I could clean one of these trees off, maybe that pine right there and scale up in it, but I didn't know there was this big of a, of a hot spot for them here. I mean, look at that, look at all the spots that they've been chewing on this. Have you ever heard the term mud sucker? That's where it comes from. There's some big boys in here too. Cool. Let's uh, let's keep heading up the hill. See if you can see it here. That's where we're going. Long ways. Some running water here too, down in a big gully. Let's get up out of here. All right, so I made it over here, but we are not gonna be hunting out of this thing. I don't know if you can see, there are hornets flying all over. I went and I lifted up the, oh, excuse me, I'm out of breath, man. I just climbed that hill. Um, that's one thing that you need to know, be in shape if you want to be prepared. But anyway, I lifted up the curtain right there and I just heard all of this buzzing. So I backed out of there, sure enough. There's a wasp nest in there somewhere. So, uh, I don't know where to go now. That, uh, that power pole over there is where I came from. And there's a heck of a ditch in the middle there. That's that ditch where you saw me walking over that rickety little bridge. So if I head back off through here, about that way, I'll get back to camp. Um, otherwise, I guess I'm done with the coyote hunting idea. Um, the only thing I can think of is maybe pull that chair out of there and sit over here somewhere. Let's try to do that. I'll be right back. All right, that's not gonna work. There's a hornet's nest right under the bottom of the front lip of the chair. So, I guess that's it for the coyote hunting. I did just hear something big crash off through the woods though. I bet there's a good deer in there. He probably heard me fumbling around with that thing and jumping around when the hornets came out. So uh, I guess that's it for tonight, guys. I am going to head back to camp and uh, just snuggle down and we'll see you uh, back at camp. Can't really tell, but it is getting dark. This camera is adapted to show the, uh, the ambient light that is available. This is an old four-wheeler trail. The guy who hunted those power lines before me used to use this and I come in a different direction. I come in from the main road. So that's why you see dead fall across the road. Well, 
I'm about halfway back to my uh, camp and I stopped to take a drink of my water and I realized that my life straw had fallen out of my cargo pocket. And that was the only method of filtration that I had. So I'm gonna go back to camp, boil this up and drink it that way. Um, hey, that's what I'm out here for, right? Um, whew, it is still really, really hot out here. It's humid. I'm just pouring sweat. So, um, looks like my battery life is starting to run a little low. I'm going to get back to camp and uh, boil up this water. I'll see you soon. Alright guys, I'm back to camp. Um, my battery is almost out and I didn't think I was going to use two full batteries in just one day but uh, apparently I did so I'm gonna boil this up it looks awful daylight out here but it's just the camera compensating for the low light it is getting pretty dark and um, I'm gonna hit the hammock and uh, we'll see you in the morning thanks guys morning everyone well, it is uh, the next morning, and uh, last night was a lot better than I thought it would be. <clears throat> um, oh, you're wondering where I got that. From the house. So, as you can probably deduce from that, I did not make it through the night. Uh, sad to say. After losing the water filter, I started to boil that water and um, started kept picking ticks off of myself. I was pouring sweat and I learned a couple valuable lessons. One, don't put my freaking life straw in my cargo pocket. And um, the second thing was, let's readjust this camera here. The second thing was that uh, I set my camp up too far away from a water source. So that was a big mistake on my part. And, um, and I know better. I just pulled in where I did at camp and, and walked to a spot that I thought looked good and, and I should know better. So I learned a valuable lesson. After I lost that water filter and I realized how dehydrated I was, I mean, I, that last video you saw, I was, I was just pouring sweat. I mean, my gloves were completely soaked through. And I realized I was going to have to have more water than that little canteen that I was about to boil. However, the sun was setting rapidly and it was too far to walk back to my water source. So um, I decided that I didn't want to, I didn't want to keep screwing with it. And I was tired of picking bugs and ticks off me. If you saw my winter, um, my winter overnight test of that get home bag, I thought that was rough. You know, I had to wake up about every 45 minutes during that one to put more wood on the fire. I literally had set an alarm on my phone for every 45 minutes because I learned over the course of the first few hours that it, that stack of wood only lasted about 45 minutes. And um, I thought that sucked. Nothing sucked like being out in the summer. So if the, uh, if the SHTF happens, uh, you know, we'll, we won't have a choice of when and if it happens, but um, summer's going to suck. So I want you guys to understand that. What I went through yesterday, I do not want to do it again. I may end up going and, and trying it again. Um, definitely not in the middle of summer. It was only 90 degrees yesterday. In middle Georgia, which is where our camp is, it, gets, it can touch 100, no problem. And I cannot imagine what it would have been like down there at 100 degrees. I mean, you'd basically have to just lay up all day and uh, and and wait for the heat to dissipate. Do some stuff early in the morning. Like right now, it's it's only nine o'clock here, and I mean, just this sun on my back. It's hot out here already. So, learned some valuable lessons. Um, Got to go buy another life straw now. You know, no big deal. Twenty bucks. So, uh, sorry, the battery died there. So what else did I learn? Uh, not to set up too far from the water, um, not to carry my life straw in my uh, cargo shorts, and um, 
Yeah, that summer sucks. The bug spray was invaluable. I mean, it kept them off my legs for the most part. Um, I kept finding them on my clothing, you know, trying to get in when I got home. That's another thing. If you ever do something like this when you get home, check yourself for ticks. I did find a few that had made their way up under my shirt. Um, no big deal. Make sure you understand how to how to remove a tick by pulling off, you know, pulling it off and making sure that the head comes off with it. You can be very sick if it doesn't. Um, that's it, guys. You know, it was a it was a definite learning experience, and uh, I'll do that winter one twice, and, uh, and if I don't have to do a summer one again, that was rough. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned some stuff. The bag had pretty much everything I needed. I mean, if I hadn't lost the life straw and set up too far from the water, um, I would have been able to pull it out. But I made that critical mistake and uh, learned from it, and I hope you take that to heart. So if you haven't seen what I have in my bag, I'll put a link below. Um, I'll probably put a link right here on in the screen for those of you watching on YouTube. And um, make sure your bag's put together, but don't just put a bag together to stick it in your truck. Because if you watch my first video, I learned a lot about what I did and did not have in that bag. And the stuff that I added as a result of last my last outing really helped me in this one. And um, unfortunately, I just made some critical uh, errors in judgment and um, and it cost me the mission so to speak you watch these you know dual survival and all these shows on on TV and um, and I kind of sit there on my couch and it's you know 68 degrees in my front room and and I laugh at these guys and I'm like stop being such a puss you know I can't believe you can't walk a mile without water man I tell you what yesterday it was everything I could do not to drink that entire 24 ounces right when I got done setting up my my hammock it's you underest you'll underestimate how much water you need um, when you saw me drinking down at the creek I, I didn't show you all of it I cut a lot of it out because I probably drank three or four of those canteen fulls and um, filled it up again and you, know, you saw the rest when I got back to camp I wish I had about another three or four with me because it was a long hike back to camp and uh, so anyway that's it guys I won't keep boring you with the rest of the details hope you learned something if you like what you saw hit the subscribe button below I'm gonna do more of these they suck but hopefully you learned something I definitely learned something and we'll just keep rolling thanks for watching guys